This is Fred Ricciani of TSC. In this interview, we chat with Raf Avila, aka the Titanic guy from TikTok, world famous Titanic expert. We chat about his career and his involvement in Tubi's new documentary, Mysteries of the Grave, The Titanic. The Titanic guy, and you are involved in a very special documentary, Mysteries of the Grave, The Titanic, which at the time of recording this, is premiering right now on Tubi. Can you tell us a little bit about your involvement and how the Titanic came into your life? This is a, this is always a very long-winded answer that I provide. But uh, so let's start at the beginning because most people just know me as a Titanic guy. And that's really how I've thought of myself for pretty much my whole life because I this has been something that I've been interested in since I was really, really young. I think it really started when I was around seven years old almost turning eight years old. I remember seeing a documentary about this shipwreck and I thought it was so cool because they were doing, you know, they were doing experiments with a model of the ship. They were doing, it was a very like a forensic analysis of it. They were testing to see what would happen if they had left all the watertight doors open when the ship had stayed, you know, afloat longer. And I was just so captivated. I asked my dad, like, what is this? And he explained to me, it was this famous ship, uh, you know, biggest ship in the world that sank. And I just, I remember that stuck with me. And then a few months later, uh, James Cameron's movie, Titanic, came out. And then I remember the documentary, and I went to go uh, see the movie, seven, eight-year-old me. I convinced my parents to take me to go see the movie. I watched it multiple times in theater, and, um, and that sort of solidified the obsession in me. So for fun, when I was in elementary school, all I would do is go to the public library, take out every single book that you could find on the Titanic. I would read through that, look at the pictures, learn the survivor stories, learn the timeline of everything. And for as long as I can remember, that's just always been part of my life. I've always been talking about the Titanic to anybody that would listen. Not a lot of people would listen. My family friends would just tune me out. And then, (laughs) which is the awesome thing about social media, because now we have people that are similar to me that don't, that aren't tuning me out, that actually want to listen to it. So if we Let's fast forward to 2020. I posted a a TikTok. It went viral. I started posting more Titanic facts. And then that's how I sort of became like the Titanic guy. And through my social media was uh, how I became in contact with, um, with the producers of this documentary. So one of the producers reached out to me via email. We set up some initial calls to talk about, you know, the project, um, chat about my interest in Titanic. And then basically Um, that's how I got involved. I flew to Boston a couple of months ago. I believe it was October of 2021. Uh, I met with the team. They were awesome. Uh, the producers were great. And then we just had a really good conversation and it was, it was really easy to talk to, uh, talk about. I mean, it's, it's something that I know very, very well. It's something that I enjoy talking about. And we were just, you know, they were asking me questions about what, what was the time period? Like, give us some context. I, I was there to sort of provide a lot of context to bring viewers into 1912 so that they could understand some of, um, you know, some of the major questions uh, that are being asked in the documentary and that people have been asking for so long, right? Like why weren't there enough lifeboats? Why did people consider Titanic unsinkable? So I was there to provide a context so that people would understand why those things took place. But uh, yeah, October, 2021, flew down there. And uh, now I'm really excited because uh, yeah, it premiered today, April 8th. You were, of course, a, a huge Titanic fan, including of the movie. But since you've been doing your research, doing all these deep dives, making these TikToks, and now being involved in this documentary, can you look at the film the same way? Is it Does this film still hold up for you? Or are there some things that you're like, man, like, this is totally not real? Yeah, dude, that, that, that's an awesome question. Because I think for anyone, any Titanic nerd, anybody who's within the Titanic community, you can appreciate the movie for what it was in 1997. It was revolutionary. It was the first time that we were seeing such incredible levels of detail with the ship, with the depiction of the sinking. So I think it holds a special place in everybody's hearts. Um, That being said, obviously we know much more now than James Cameron and the team did back in 1995, 96, when they started filming and, and, you know, setting, you know, doing the production of the movie. So there are certain things that we look at now. We know, for example, that the, the ship didn't quite break up exactly as it was predicted. The, you know, the angle at which they show the ship, that it was probably a little bit less than that. And uh, it's funny because James Cameron released a documentary, I believe in 2020, um, where he goes and revisits the movie and he has criticisms of his own movie. You know, 
He's saying, well, if we were doing it today, I would change this, or I wouldn't show this. Or now we know based on uh, other dives that have been done to the wreck after the movie, that this was inaccurate, right? So yeah, there are certain things that you look at today and you're like, okay, that's not quite right, but it's okay. Spoiler alert, I'm currently interviewing you right now uh, from your office, uh, from your other job, your your other life in the other yeah. RAF uh, multiverse and everything. Mm-hmm. But uh, at the time we're recording this, of course, you have over 600,000 followers on TikTok. You're in this documentary that will hopefully blow up on Tubi. Really good stuff. I had a chance to, to check it out. How has your life changed since this kind of sudden wave of fame and virality? Yeah, it's uh, I'm definitely a lot busier for sure. But uh, but I love it. I, I appreciate it. It was it all happened overnight. It happened very quickly, actually. And you hear that from a lot of people that, you know, have started, have done the whole influencer thing that it, all it really takes is one video or one particular moment and everything can change. And that's pretty much what happened with me. Um, it was in 2020. It was April of 2020. I was commemorating the 108th anniversary of the sinking. Uh, for me and for a lot of the Titanic community, we always take a moment on April 14th, April 15th to commemorate the sinking. So I was, I, I think I had some scotch or some wine with me getting ready to, to listen to uh, the Titanic Honor and Glory um, live stream that they were doing on YouTube. And then I thought, hey, listen, I think it'd be cool if I shared uh, an interesting survivor story on TikTok. This was something that I, that was new to me. I think it was new for a lot of people at the beginning of the pandemic. If you recall, people were like, oh, we're bored. Let's let's see what this is about. And so uh, I decided to share the story of Charles Jugan, aka the drunk baker, because it is a true story. It's very, it's very unique. Uh, and it, it's super interesting. So I decided to, you know, stitch together a couple of clips from the movie because James Cameron does depict him in the movie. He would he showed a lot of historical characters. Uh, in the movie. So I thought that would be interesting. I, you know, filmed my TV. Mm-hmm. I decided to add a voiceover so I could explain a little bit about his story, how he survived. Uh, and then I added some captions, then boom, it just sent it away. Not really thinking too much about it. And then very quickly, it started, boom, going viral. Went from like 100 views to 300 to 1,000 to 5,000. Very, very quickly. I'd never seen a video of mine explode like that. So I continued with my Titanic events over the night. I woke up the next day. That video had amassed probably almost 2 million views. And I had gained nearly like 9,000, 10,000 followers at that point. So I was like, wow, that, uh, yeah, that's interesting. (laughs) So I I pretty much continued posting uh, more TikToks, talking about Titanic, sharing some interesting facts, uh, sharing some survivor stories. And then I, I went with that. And all of the videos after that kept on getting, the algorithm was lo- really loving me at the time. I would get like a million views, two million views. And that's how I started building up the following. So it's it happened very quickly in 2020. Um, and obviously my life changed in the sense that, you know, now I could speak about this with a group of people that were similar to me, that we enjoyed nerding out on, on the very fine details about the timeline of the Titanic, the ship itself, the different survivor stories. So it definitely, I'm a lot busier now because I do try to post several times a week on TikTok. Um, also, I, I, my Instagram for the TikTok is, is sorry, the, the Instagram for the Titanic guy has really been exploding. And then I've also been posting on YouTube so that I could provide my, my viewers some longer form content. So we can really do some deep dives into some of these topics. So Definitely very busy after work finishes because I do consulting. Um, you know, I'll, I'll spend some time with my wife. We chill and everything, and then I usually go off and and think of what I want to want to talk about for the day. You know, record and then post. So a lot busier, but I enjoy it. There, there's some facts here from from this documentary. I don't wanna give too much away that that blew my mind. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the classic system obviously we, we kind of know about, but being a reminder of it is kind of sad. The fact that the Titanic had the capacity for 8,000 tons of coal, for better or worse, uh, the, the lifeboat situation, which obviously didn't really work out for, for a lot of the passengers there. Was there any fact that you didn't know that blew your mind that you're allowed to share? I would say those very specific facts uh, that Kaylee, you know, because Kaylee's actually one of my TikTok friends and she mm-hmm. features in the documentary. So it was really nice to see her there uh, as well, because 
I started posting and then I noticed she started posting and then people started tagging us in each other's videos. She's very, very knowledgeable when it comes to the technical aspect. So pretty much everything that she said was very, uh, very impressive, you know, with, with the actual, when she was talking about the boilers and the capacity of the boilers and all of the, the coal and how much it would consume a day. I thought that was very shocking and very interesting. Um, you, you'll find in the documentary that the documentary tends to ask a lot of uh, sort of, you know, those common questions that some people sometimes call theories or the conspiracy theories. So uh, I do appreciate that in the documentary, they, they do ask the questions, but then they also allow the guests to, to, you know, to bring up the actual facts and sort of set the record straight because it, it's very easy for people to to sort of cling on and lean into those sort of conspiratorial or theories uh, because it sells, it does well. And and it's obvious that whenever anybody talks about the Titanic, especially when it, when we're approaching an anniversary, some documentary, some companies, you know, they, they try to do sort of clickbaity titles like this is the real reason Titanic sank. And obviously you'll see that a little bit in the trailer to, to drive some, some interest, especially for an audience that, isn't well versed in Titanic. I, I do understand that it's, you know, for a generic audience, which is awesome to captivate them. But I do really appreciate that uh, in the documentary, we're able to, to set the record straight, to spew out some facts and to provide some more context behind what was happening in that time period. And, and if you really think about it, I mean, we're of the generation where we grew up on the movie, but, and of course the document, the various other documentaries, but the, the movie came out what, like 25 years ago now, like it's, there's yeah, a whole new generation. Yeah, there's a whole new generation that's not even familiar with with the Titanic, or maybe she's heard like a a passing reference. So all this is new to them. Yeah, maybe that might be one of the reasons why um, my accounts have been doing pretty well so far, because it's interesting to see my audience. It's a lot of people who are my age and a little bit older, but it's also a lot of really younger people going through their Titanic phase, right? I I get a lot of uh, comments from from parents saying my six-year-old, my seven-year-old is obsessed with Titanic. And I can totally relate to that because I was that, you know, seven-year-old boy who was like, oh, this is so interesting. So I think there, there is definitely a new generation that is interested in, in finding out more about the Titanic. And the cool thing about the world that we live in now is that if you want to find something out, you want to, you know, dive deep into something, then you have all these avenues that you could go and search up. Right. We have the Internet, we have social media, TikTok, YouTube, all these different places where you can consume this info and, and, and learn about it. So I think that's what's really driving up another wave of Titanic interest. We always like to do a lightning round for our guests just for folks to get to know them better. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Favorite late night snack or cheat meal? Uh, barbecue Doritos chips. What is your favorite subject besides Titanic? working out fitness right. there you go most awkward moment either in the filming of the documentary or just in general as a creator watching your old content <laughs> watching your old content you know what i mean you go Very back much to your so. first videos and everything you're like bro why am i talking like that what is it Ugh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's fair okay if you weren't a consultant and you weren't the titanic guy what would be your alternate career path i wanted to be an actor when i was a little kid but now I probably want to do something with fitness. I love calisthenics. In my personal Instagram, it's like, I tell people, I'm like, yeah, you can follow me, but all I do, I just post workouts and other stuff. <laughs> How does the uh, wifey react to the uh, t- Titanic habit? Oh, she loves it. She, she knew what she was getting into very early on. <laughs> Anybody who interacts with me quickly learns that it's like, okay, Raph is going to talk about Titanic again, but she enjoys that. And she's she loves hearing me talk about it. She's she loves hearing new facts and everything. She we we're gonna watch a documentary together later tonight. She's really excited. I watched it um, last night. I got a message from the producer, like, "Hey, it's up. Go watch." So I was just you know seeing it, but no, she loves it. What's the best piece of advice you give content creators? Try to be authentic. Be yourself. Don't um, don't get into the habit of reading all of your comments of going into other people, you know, where whenever you're featured, don't go and read the comments. You're, no matter what type of creator you are, no matter how many followers you have, there's always going to be people that maybe don't like your stuff. Don't focus on the negativity. Be yourself. Remember why you're doing it in the first place because you're sharing something that you love, you enjoy doing this, and keep it fun, right? Just people can see when you're trying 
when you're not being genuine. And it's my, uh, my hope that I'm always trying to give information that is factual and that I'm, I'm doing it and I'm having fun with it because the moment that it doesn't become fun, then I'm, you know, I step back and be like, why am I doing this? Right. So authenticity and, and being genuine with, with your followers. Why should people check out the documentary? Because you will realize you will, you will investigate why is it that human beings are still obsessed with this one particular disaster 110 years later. There are so many coincidences. There's so many different factors that go into the Titanic. Uh, and people are still going to be talking about it for probably another hundred years. So it's, it's definitely something that is worth checking out because people are just obsessed. It's interesting to know why people are obsessed. I mean, I think the documentary tries to answer those questions. Fantastic, Raf. I really do appreciate the time. Mysteries of the Grave, the Titanic is streaming right now on Tubi. So please check it out, including our buddy Raf right here. He is featured as well. Raf, before I let you go, where can fans find you online and where can we find you next? Great question. You guys can check out my website, titanicguy.com. If you search anywhere on social media, search for Titanic Guy, you'll find me there. So titanicguy.com. My TikTok is just my name, Raf underscore Avila. But again, if you search Titanic Guy, you'll see me. My Instagram, titanic.guy. Uh, and YouTube, Raph Avila. But again, just search Titanic Guy, Raph, and you'll see me there.